the reality on the ground says differently. In the first three weeks of March, one quarter of aid convoys were denied. As I say, the restrictions on UNRWA are immense. I can speak to my own experience of the complexities of even getting that food aid to the north, which is why if you come in from the north in those crossings, that's a game changer. In the same way that the world has focused a little bit on airdrops and, and ships, obviously right now the desperation is so great that those people who've been forcibly put into this position will are not will, will take food aid wherever it comes from it shouldn't be the case when i'm in the north you're talking about an area that was famed for strawberries not for malnutrition for strawberries but we have to be clear that when a ship comes in it has the equivalent tonnage of around of around 12 trucks there are hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of trucks you know 5 miles from where i am now you could get hundreds and hundreds of trucks within 10 minutes if that border crossing was open in the north to those people who are cut off. That's an important thing to remember. When I was in the north, Amy, those people are cut off. You're past the last checkpoint. And when we access those people, when I'm on the street, every person, the first thing they want to tell me in English or Arabic is, we need food, we need food. Now I know this, of course, this is my work, but of course I listen to them. What was revealing is why are they saying that? They are saying that because their assumption is the world doesn't know. Because how would this be allowed to happen if the world knew?